So uh, again, for those of you who joined later, I've set up a Google Doc with some notes. And I'm going to mute everyone so that we don't um, get a lot of feedback. And actually, if you're here watching, you really probably don't need to be on Zoom because that will really, really uh, lead to, to feedback. Um, so I'm uh, going to wait a little bit to start sharing my screen. But um, I guess maybe I'll, I'll jump forward a little bit. Actually, let me, let me, let me do this thing first. For those of you who are on Zoom on the call, you should see a poll that just popped up. And so... I'm confused by the question because I had a Zoom conservatory meeting yesterday, but it wasn't about. Oh, no, the, I'm talking about the one that I gave that Aviva okay. organized that a, okay. a ton of uh, faculty okay. came into. So if you weren't at that one, click no one. Okay. Um, okay, so we, get, we got most people on the call who have. Um, um, yeah, it, Pat, if you were at the one that I gave, it wasn't a conservatory meeting, but it was arranged by, you know, Aviva for the Humanities School and then other schools and conservatories jumped on, which is why I've been calling it the My School Conservatory Meeting. Um, let me end the poll, share those results. So a few of you were there yesterday. Um, um, majority of you won't work. So, uh, I will, at, as we go through this session today, um, pull up some of the, the uh, screen shares and so forth that I shared with, uh, with the people who were on that call yesterday, just to make sure we're all up, up to speed. Given the size of the group, I'm not going to try to have everyone do introductions. Uh, you're all here, of course, because uh, you're interested in taking your classes online in Zoom. And um, so what I want to do is walk through several, um, several pieces today. I want to talk uh, with you about how to uh, set up and organize sessions with your Zoom account. Um, I want to go over a little bit of uh, you know, how the Zoom interface works, and then we'll get into specifically some of the issues of using Zoom for you for doing class while this environment is probably uh, looks superficially similar to your face-to-face -face class and that everyone is online at the same time you know it's real time um, it's different than being face-to-face -face, and we'll talk about some of those things we've got time i hope to have time to talk about doing polling like we just did um, it, we can talk about how to do breakout rooms, uh, which is a way that we might do some smaller group discussions. So um, let me um, let me go ahead and share my screen. So now you should um, you should be seeing uh, my browser. And at this point, I'm not going to pay any attention to the chat. Marie's online specifically to be the chat monitor. Uh, tip number one for doing Zoom classes online. Um, if you do have more than a, a dozen students, it's very awkward to have everyone with their webcams on and their mics on talking as if you were having a class discussion. So a lot of what you want to do is to, gener is to direct the conversation toward the chat, especially if, if you're more focused at a given time on kind of presenting. If there is a lot of, of activity going on in the chat, then it's good to have someone designated as a chat monitor so that you don't have to be. 
and Marie is going to play that role for us today. So, um, we'll, we'll talk about uh, some things I think you probably all, all want to think about when you are using your Zoom account. And if you haven't gotten a Zoom account, contact uh, Campus Tech Services, send them an email at helpdesk at purchase.edu and they can get you set up. So I'm gonna log into my account um, um, at zoom.us. I'm gonna talk about some account settings that you should think about. I'm gonna go through the process of scheduling sessions. We'll, we'll go back to the uh, Zoom interface uh, in more detail. And then I've got polling and um, breakout rooms. So if you log in, you can do a, a fair amount of what I'm gonna talk about in the next five, 10 minutes from the Zoom client that you download to your laptop or your tablet. Um, but I kind of recommend that you regularly or, or at least for getting things set up, go on your laptop or your desktop to zoom.us, log in with the account information that you've gotten, you should see your profile page and you can do a couple of things here on your profile page which might be of, of interest you can as warren did uh yesterday uh edit your profile picture or put one up there um, rename or put establish a name on, on the account um, everyone who has an account has a personal meeting room and we'll talk a little bit about that one thing uh, else that you might want to do on this page is check to see what the default time zone is on your account. Uh, Marie and I had this account for this pro account for like, I don't know, five years or so. And every time I would go to schedule a session, it would show up as, you know, Pacific standard time and I'd have to reset it. Finally realized, oh, I could have been doing this and not have all of those years of, 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 of frustration. Um, there is a, uh, a, a tab essentially where you can see your meetings. Again, you've got a personal meeting room, but as oh, you see it, yeah. Back on the previous page, I mean, when I got instructions, it said you could change your password from the one that I was yep. given from CTS, but I couldn't figure out how to change the password. Well, it would be, you have to edit this down here. Just down there, okay. Yeah. Sign in, okay. Sorry. That's okay. Um, there's a tab for your meetings. When you schedule meetings, you'll have to see your upcoming meetings. You can link back to all of your previous meetings. You've got your personal meeting room. Uh, webinars does not apply. This is an add-on. Uh, you can do recordings. I generally do not record our sessions to the cloud. I'm recording this to the computer in the TLTC here. Uh, I'll process it, put it up in YouTube, and then eventually delete it from the computer here. If you record all of your sessions to the cloud, you'll rapidly run out of cloud storage space. I mean, you could at a pinch uh, record to your, uh, uh, to your cloud space for the account and then uh, download the files to your computer that way and then put them wherever you want to put them. Um, if you are recording sessions, uh, it's not a good practice to then put those up into Moodle to share with your students. Moodle is not a video server. YouTube is. So um, you could easily upload your recorded sessions to and to your YouTube account. If you don't want the whole world seeing it, upload it as unlisted. No one will be able to find it, but you'll still be able to use the link for that uploaded recording to put into your Moodle course to direct your student to go back to it. And that gives them access to your, your uh, recording of the Zoom session in the Moodle course space without putting a huge amount of, of, of file, uh, video files up on Moodle. I do want, however, to uh, talk about a number of, of settings here. 
So um, if you are logged into your account at zoom.us, there is access to your uh, account settings here. Also under account management, there's, um, there's an, a link to account settings that gets you to the same place. There are several default settings for the meetings on, on these accounts that I don't think are the ones we want. So I want to talk about some of those. Uh, and uh, really nothing to say about telephone settings or really recording settings. Um, so, video, audio, join before host, etc. So if you just if we just scroll down through here, these first two uh, options define what the default settings are when you set up a new meeting. The defaults are there for them to be off. That's uh, that's perfectly fine. You could set your host video option to be on. This does not require your host video to be on all the time. All this means is when you set up a new session by default, this I option will be turned on. If you don't want to start a session that way, you can turn it off. So if you find yourself more often turning the video on when you're setting up the sessions, set it here once and don't have to worry about it so much, but the default is fine as well. Um, Join before host it allows your students or whoever you're inviting to your session to join the session before you do. Um, that's, I'm thinking more and more that's a good idea because we had a situation last night where I set up a session as host. And by default, there was not this join before host. There was a waiting room instead the students who I, for the class I set this up for, were coming in. I got distracted and wasn't there to let everyone in right at the start of the class, not even the instructors I had set up the class for. So if you do this, join before host, everyone can just accumulate there and, um, and you can join when you join. You can tell your students, you know, pop into the class 10 minutes ahead of time so that you know that you're all set up and running to go with your Zoom client on whatever device you're going to be using. And, um, and that's that. Uh, required password is the default setting. Um, and I find that a barrier, especially for the kinds of workshops that I'm going to be doing. So I'm going to turn that off, Marie, on our account so that when we set up new sessions, uh, it's not going to automatically create a password for the session. Um, you might want to think about having mute participants upon entry set or not. Uh, if you're setting up a session for your class where it's primarily going to be you in instructor mode, you need to give them a lecture. Uh, you want them to be able to join easily, uh, but you don't want all of this background noise overriding your, their, everyone's ability to hear you, then you might just mute everyone's microphone when they come in. I didn't have that set for this session. Everyone had their mic open when they came in. Starting was starting to get a little noisy, so I used the host command that I'll show you a little bit later to mute everyone's microphone. That did not, you know, that doesn't permanently silence everyone. As as we saw, Warren could go unmute himself to ask the question, um, and and. Um, and then I don't know if he, I actually don't know if he muted himself back again. Kind of good protocol for running these sessions is if someone's not talking, it's better if they mute their microphone, especially if they're not wearing headsets um, and they're getting uh, a feedback loop from between their computer speakers and their computer microphone. Um, so um, you might just, I mean, these are all things you need to think about 
conveying to your students, here's how we're going to operate in this room. Come on in. Uh, maybe we'll have some chit chat time to begin with. At some point, I'm going to mute, mute everyone's microphones. That doesn't mean you can never talk, but when you're not talking, mute your microphone so that we don't get a lot of feedback, a lot of room noise from one room to another. If you have that on the on the mute there, like it's turned on so that when they come in it is muted, then on the host you can unmute. So the settings I'm looking at now don't necessarily, uh, if, I, if I change this to mute participants upon entry, what that does is it doesn't necessarily impact any given session that I've already got scheduled. What it, since I'm setting it on the settings page here, what that means is the next time I go to schedule a session, by default, this option will be checked. And if it's a session where, you know, I've only got eight students coming in and I want them to all be able to talk right away, when I'm setting that session up on the session, I can uncheck it. Okay. This is more kind of account settings. Um, chat settings, file transfer, polling. So the chats, you don't really probably need to, do, to, to change anything on the chat settings. I just wanted to highlight them. By default, there is a chat window uh, as part of your Zoom session screen. Uh, everyone, by default, has access to posts, comments back and forth. Uh, by default, Zoom also has private chat. So, um, you know, Marie could have, when she sent me that note, don't forget to record, she could have selected, you know, my uh, account specifically, and then I would have seen it in the chat, but no one else would have seen it in the chat. If you don't want private chatting going on between your students for some reason, you could turn that off, um, but that's, that's where it is. Um, polling, it seems, is off by default, which seems to be a very strange setting um, to me. Uh, we'll talk about how you can set up polls. Why, and anyone can unmute who wants to address this, why might you want to use polling during your uh, Zoom classroom sessions? Check for understanding. Check for understanding, okay. You've been talking about something for a while, you can throw out a quick poll. Uh, get students to weigh in and you get, when you're in the classroom and you're presenting something, you can get maybe a feel for the room by looking for glazed expressions and so forth, right? Uh, it's more difficult to do that online. And so polling is, an, is a nice capability to have. Uh, Um, annotations are also on by default. Um, this allows, when you're sharing a screen or somebody is sharing a screen, it allows participants, participants to be able to use tools to mark up that screen, which might be useful if you're trying to facilitate some kind of group collaborative work. Um, and there is a whiteboard uh, functionality in Zoom as well that we can look at in a minute. I was actually sharing some materials with the class I was in last night, and at some point somebody drew a red line across the screen, which just stayed there because I didn't want to take the time to find an eraser to erase it. So you, if you want, you might want you know turn off annotations. Uh, this next one I think is also important. Uh, Nonverbal feedback seems to be disabled uh, as the default account setting. You know, this gives the thumbs up, thumbs down, you know, green check mark, red X, uh, raise hand uh, kind of feedback tools that I think are going to be very useful for how we, we run our courses. So in your account settings, you might want to turn non feedback on so that your sessions actually have access to that, that kind of functionality. Uh, you also need to turn on breakout rooms. Uh, and I don't know if, if those of you who are on the call are logged into your Zoom account and, you, and are following along. Um, I mean, you, you should check this, but certainly on our pro account, and I suspect it might be the same with the uh, business accounts that CTS is distributing, this breakout room feature was not automatically activated for the account. 
Um, uh, question. <clears throat> sure. Yeah, if I wanted to go along with what you're doing in, but I'm already in a Zoom environment, so. How yeah, you can still log into your Zoom account in a browser while you're in somebody else's Zoom session in the Zoom client. Okay. <laughs> you need to you need to kind of divorce those things. Uh, I mean, for all I know, you could have a browser up and you could be uh, at Amazon shopping for garden supplies. <laughs> uh, but you have that browser up and be looking at your Zoom account, and then just tab back and forth. Now, when I went to full to share screen, probably most of your screens went to full screen. If you hit escape, you can you can minimize the, the screen sharing part so you have it's easier to get over to other applications if you if you need to. Okay, so at this point, I, let me I have a question. You. Sorry. Go ahead. I, I, oh, uh, hi, uh, I'm Alfredo. Uh, so I have uh, two questions actually. Um, is there a way for there to be a log uh, of the students who join the meeting on what time they join? This is a sort of a tracking attendance right. kind of thing. So there are a couple of ways you can do that. Um, if you if you do have your students wait until they get out uh, until you get into the session, then well, let me think about that. Um, no, scratch that. That's not important. There's there's two ways, and we'll look at those in in a bit. One would, okay. be, one would be to, because it's right down, uh, I thought I had a tendency somewhere. Anyway, uh, one would be to um, just have somebody keep track of the participants showing up in the participants list. And uh -huh. the other thing you can do is have uh, all of your students say, when you're uh, getting ready to start the class up, Go into the chat room and just enter their name and 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 add it to the chat record because you uh, can get you can archive the chat and then you can go through at your leisure and say okay Susan was here Fred was here because they typed into the chat. Oh, okay, perfect. Yeah, and I uh, just one one more uh, question. I don't know if you're going to cover it later, uh, but yesterday uh, you were throughout your. Um, your session, you were uh, saying how there were people that had their hands raised. And we'll look I'm at wondering... that again. Okay, yeah, yeah, so sorry. Okay. Okay, uh, okay I'm done. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah. So uh, going back to the attendance thing, though, you might set a kind of class procedure. I don't know if you want to call it a class policy that to tell your students when they are signing into the Zoom session, use their full name. You know, don't log in as Marvin Martian 981 uh, because then you don't know who's showing up. Okay, Marie, were there any qu other questions in the chat uh, over what we've talked about so far? Okay. So uh, let's talk about scheduling meetings. So depending on your classes and how you're planning to use it, you could theoretically just use your personal meeting room all the time. Um, I was talking with a faculty member, I forget if it was on the session yesterday or at some other time. Uh, they had a graduate level class, they had a, a handful of students. Rather than schedule a session for each class period, they just said, well, I'm just going to give my students the, the URL to join my personal meeting room. And I'm going to tell them that when it comes time for us to meet, I'm going to go into my personal meeting room, join me there. And you don't have to do any scheduling at all. Uh, if you've got multiple classes and, um, and you tried to do that, I mean, and you gave the same 
personal meeting room uh, URL out to all of your classes. I mean, probably you wouldn't have students from one class showing up when you're trying to meet with the other class, but um, just to keep things uh, organized, you might want to go ahead and schedule specific meeting times for each of the classes that you're meeting with. So to schedule a new meeting, um, I mean, if you're logged into your Zoom account, you see schedule a meeting up here. You see under meetings, uh, upcoming meetings is schedule a new meeting. You click there, it's pretty straightforward. Um, you know, Mars exploration class. You can specify when. So we're gonna meet next Monday at um, 2.30 p.m. for two hours. If you're gonna meet every Monday afternoon at 2.30 with your class, uh, there's no reason really to set up uh, separate meetings for each of those classes. You have the ability to set up a recurring meeting. Uh, so recur every week at that time until um, you know you don't you don't need to meet anymore. So wherever. Um, again, um, required meeting password or not. Some of these we've already talked about. Because I changed the setting in the account settings, enable join before host is already set on this. Uh, because I set mute participants upon entry, that's already set. If for this particular recurring meeting, I actually don't want that account setting to be applied, I can unselect it. And then if I click save, that meeting would be created. I'm not actually doing my Mars seminar for freshmen right now, so I'm not going to bother creating this uh, example here. But if you did, um, and then you, if you hit save, you would be taken back to your uh, meetings panel and it would show up as uh, a meeting that's in your upcoming meetings list. So you had, you had a, uh, a meeting and video for you or the participants and you had that on or off? Well, in what I was just looking at, um, you know, I, I um, did not specify in the account settings that these were on by default. It's, um, Unless you think you're going to ha your students are going to have trouble finding out where to turn on their webcam and turn it off, it's probably best to leave things off to begin with, because someone might want to decide that they're ready to share their webcam before it shows up in the Zoom room where all of their uh, student colleagues are, right? Um, so setting these on by default. Mm, it's probably not, for most cases, what you want. Okay, so let's say you have gone through, you, you've decided you're going to schedule meetings, or you're going to, you've decided you're going to use your personal meeting room. How uh, do you get your students there? Uh, I personally don't recommend sending out invitations to your students through Zoom. I mean, it's possible to do, but if you select an upcoming class session in this screen and click on it, you get the screen that shows all of the settings for that meeting. If you realized, oh, this shouldn't have been at 10 a.m., it should have been at 11 a.m., you can click here to edit the meeting uh, and you will get back to. Um, you know the place where you can where you uh, set up the the meeting you you get you can get back here to change things but also um on this screen that has the the settings for the meeting it shows you what's the url that people need to go to to uh join your meeting 
If your students are joining on their iPads or their phones or, or their tablets uh, and are going to use that, you don't need to. I just want to see what it says, invite attendees. Yeah. You're saying not to do that. Are you, oh, you're, no. going to, you're going to click it and make a link. Yeah, so okay. if you copy this, you can put it into Moodle as a course announcement. Hey, we're going to meet Monday at 2.30 in my fancy new Zoom room. Here's the URL. Click on this Monday at 2.25 and make sure your computer or your tablet or your phone is set up to uh, attend a Zoom session. Um, you can click on this copy the invitation link that's just right by it. And this gives you a more extensive invitation. It still has that link for joining, but it also makes it clear what the meeting ID is. So if you do have a student who's got Zoom installed on their iPad and they just open up the Zoom app, they can put in um, the meeting number to join the meeting. They can do it more manually rather than clicking on the link and having it you know, automatically open up. I'm sorry, I didn't see how you clicked on this. So on the page okay. where you yep. have the meeting described, right next to where the link is, oh, you I click see. on copy the invitation. Um, the invitation also has a phone number. Well, one thing I should point out, if you look at the, the link, the URL for the Zoom meeting, it looks suspiciously like the meeting ID, right? So the URL and the meeting ID is basically the same set of numbers here. Uh, except, there are, except for spaces. Except for spaces, right? So uh, there are also phone numbers that uh, people can uh, that that um, people can dial into your uh, Zoom session. Why would they do that? Well, let's say let's say they're on a desktop computer that doesn't have a microphone. It's got speakers, but it doesn't have a microphone. How is that person going to be able to participate? Well, instead of joining by computer audio, they can join by phone. Um, if for some reason their internet connection is kind of marginal, they keep their webcam off, but it's still not good enough for them to pump out voice over IP, they can join by phone. Uh, so you can copy that whole meeting invitation, paste it into a Moodle announcement saying, here's where we're gonna be Monday at 2.30. And then, um, Keith, sorry, I think the other, isn't there a way to also take that invitation and send it via email to your class list? Yeah, so I, my preference is to use a Moodle an announcement because Moodle will do the emailing and have the announcement in your Moodle course. So there are two places for students to have it. But if you rather just use the class distribution list that is set up in my heliotrope, you could take that uh, announcement, click on that, that dis, you know, put that distribution list into your email program uh, and copy the email, uh, the, uh, the invitation into the body and send it off to your class that way. That, that's fine as long as students don't delete their emails. The nice thing about doing it through a Moodle announcement is that it gets to their email, but if they delete their email, they everyone can go into the uh, Moodle space and still have that announcement um, available to them. Um, okay, so then the last thing is um, starting and um, joining sessions. So, uh, if, if this were the class for Monday and you're the first one there, you can log into your um, uh, Zoom account, go to your meetings, see this upcoming meeting, click start, and you would start the, the Zoom session. 
Now, if you enabled join before host so that your students can go into the space before you do, they may have actually already started the meeting by clicking on the link and hanging out in your Zoom room waiting for you. In which case, you don't really need to start, but you do need to join. Uh, by default, if that happens and you've got students who have already gone into the room before you, you will probably get an email from Zoom saying, hey, you've got participants in your room. Um, care to start things up? And so, um, you know, that's, you click on the link and, and you don't even have to log into your, uh, your Zoom account to, to get things going. So there's lots of ways to, once you've got the room set up, get the information out to your students. We're gonna meet here, uh, show up a little bit ahead of time, make sure you can get in, and you either start the room or if you let them enter the room before, you join them, and then when it's 2.30, you, you do what you would do if it was 2.30 here in the classroom. So, so, so you're saying that here, you're, you've gone to your Zoom account, you can press start, but if they've already joined, then well, how do you, how is that, does it look differently? Well, it, it, there's no join. start button, there's a join, join button. Already. Okay. Yep. Um, let me just go back to a few of the slides from yesterday. So, uh, and we'll, I'll, sh I'll share out the link to these slides uh, to those of you who are here today as well. Uh, this pretty much just is screenshots showing the, what we just have talked about. Um, and the point I, I wanted to point out here is if you, want to do this through the uh, VoiceThread app on your tablet, if you just open up the tablet uh, and, you've got, and you're logged in on your uh, tablet app to your account, you will have a schedule meeting option. And if you do that, you get uh, on the tablet app the same kind of screen for filling out, you know, what meeting is it, when is it happening. Um, I'm not sure, oh yeah, there is recurring meeting here. Uh, there's the option to enable join before uh, host and so forth. So you can schedule uh, a session through your tablet. Personally, I just find the, the when I'm logged into my account on the website, I, I, it's more clearly laid out and I can see all my upcoming meetings and so forth. Um, and so, yeah, students could, if they don't follow your link, they could click join meeting. And if you've given them the meeting ID, they can enter the meeting ID um, and so forth. Okay. So um, basic, operation we uh, we looked at this um, a little bit at the start of this session again um, you might need to orient your students although they're going to get oriented to zoom very quickly given what's going on on campus that yeah mouse over the zoom screen you'll see options for turning your camera on and off you'll see an option for opening up the chat window so that you've got a place to and you know add to the chat conversation uh you've got a place to see the, you know now student participants can't manage the participants but they they can see who else is in the room uh, you can see here as host when i'm looking at this uh, right here uh, at the bottom of the participants uh, list, there is a, a button that would allow me to mute everyone in the room. So let's say it is time that I'm gonna go into presenter mode. I need to give a 15 minute lecture on um, how gullies form on Mars. And I don't want a lot of chit chat in the background. I can click mute all and then um, Students can still raise their hand in a ways in ways that we'll look at in just a minute here, and you can recognize them. Um, you're going to have to figure out what kind of a 
conversation, discussion, protocol is going to work for your class in the type of online classroom environment that you want. Um, again, if it's a small class, uh, kind of a, 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 a colloquium or seminar kind of class where the focus is on gathering around a table and discussing, maybe you just want to unmute everyone all and you want to uh, switch out, have everyone switch from the speaker view to the Brady Bunch, the gallery view where everyone shows up on screen, then everyone has a certain amount of nonverbal cues through facial uh, and so forth. And, and you can kind of manage who's jumping into the conversation at what time without the whole hand raising kind of thing. Really depends on your class, the size, the style of it, how you want to do this classroom management of handling conversations. Um, so uh, along those same lines, um, I just mentioned a little bit about muting and unmuting, hand raising. If you actually have gone in to the account settings and turned on nonverbal cues, nonverbal feedback, then you will have more options showing up down here below the, at the bottom of the participants list. There is a green check mark and a uh, red X. How might you use those? Um, uh, let me actually, I'm gonna stop sharing for a bit. Um, so, um, let me, it, does everyone see the participants list on their screen? Let me just throw out a quick question. How many of you are planning to, uh, to use Zoom in the next uh, day or so? If so, click on the, the, the green check mark for yes. Uh, if not, click on the red X for no. I begin, to, I'm starting to see some red check marks here. Um, so going back to Ursula's comment about you know, why you might use a poll, this is a very simple way to do a poll without setting up a poll. If you've been talking about some material uh, about how gullies form on Mars and you can throw out, well, okay, so given what we've talked about, how many of you think liquid carbon dioxide play a role in the formation of gullies? If yes, click on the green check marks. If not, click on the, the um, uh, red X and you oh, get so a quick, quick green sense of check mark is, you mean, did I just do it now? Is, well, let's see. Um, yes, you did, Warren. Okay. Hey. So, I mean, I as instructor have the ability to click on clear all. Of course, I'm not sharing my screen now, so you can't see what I'm doing, uh, which is one, one disadvantage of trying to talk about doing Zoom when you're in Zoom, which is why I had to all do all those uh, screen captures. But you get the idea. I mean, as you scroll through, let me ask, actually ask you, you see the green check marks or the red X's of other participants, right? Yes. Yes. Thank you, Robin. I, I, I'm confused about that. Sorry. I'm you guys have, you have to click on the button at oh, the bottom. Oh, it's on the right hand, right hand side. Okay. I see it now. Sorry. You have to click on the, bo the button at the bottom that says participants with a number. A couple people are asking on the chat. Um, and then that brings up another window that has these options, if that helps you guys. Got it. Yeah. So you should see a, a green check mark, a red X, a go slower, a go faster. Um, it, there's a thumbs up, a thumbs down. There's a little clappy symbol. There's a coffee cup that says, I need a break. There is a clock icon that says, I'm away from the meeting. So all of these nonverbal cues, um, as a host of the meeting, I've got an option to clear all, uh, nonverbal cues from the participants list. So if you're looking at the participants list, you should see some of the participants that said green check, uh, red X. I'm going to click clear all and um, all of your nonverbal feedback is, is gone. How did you click 
clear all. Where is that? Where is that? Uh, I have a clear all option because I'm host. You don't have a clear all because you're a participant. But let me go back to share the screen, share my screen again. And but Warren, but Warren, you could, you can unclick your choice. Yeah. And it'll make it go away. Right. Yeah. So it, it looks like this, right? So if we have a, a, a participants list that doesn't have 40 some people in it, um, you know, you've got the people listed there and then the tools down here. Um, there is this more that shows the thumbs up, thumbs down, uh, clapping, so forth. Uh, and as host, whenever I need to start with a blank slate, I can click uh, clear all. Um, Keith, could I ask a quick question? Sure. Some of my students are, uh, at least this, yesterday's class, a couple did it by phone. And I'm already seeing that the real estate's getting used up by all these these yep. pop-up windows, which are very helpful on a laptop. But, and I have a bigger laptop than most. Is there, with the phone interface? I mean, we should just not recommend a phone interface for this, right? Don't well, you think? phone, uh, phone works if you know what you're doing. But uh, for the students, that they won't. Right. Are, I don't know how they're going to manage all this information on a screen. Right. Perfectly good, valid point. Uh, if they've got tablets and many of them do, that would be better. Uh, but phone, smartphone, the app on the smartphone is better than just calling in and hearing nothing but the audio. Yeah. Yeah. And if, uh, if, if you or a student is on a phone, uh, you know, we could have a whole other session on the phone app, but uh, the default would be basically to display the whatever the the presentation screen is, and there would be a menu option that would allow students to pop up the chat window over that, and then close the chat window when they want to go back and look at what's going on in the screen, or pop up the participants uh, panel if they want to you know do a thumbs up or thumbs down, and then close that to go back to the screen. So yeah, there is the smaller the screen, the more management you have to do. Um, so in terms of doing the screen sharing, um, If you go back here to where we're looking at the tools uh, that are available at the bottom of the screen, um, sharing the screen would be an option here. If you click on that, you are then asked by Zoom, what do you want to share? Uh, is there a particular, I've got uh, my PowerPoint up in a PowerPoint window and that's the only thing from my computer I want to share. You would select that and then click share and then Zoom would take the contents of that uh, PowerPoint um, window and blast it out to everyone who's on the call. And you can go through your presentation, uh, show your slides just as if you were in the classroom, talk about them. Um, slide transitions, would work because they're working on your computer. They might be clunky, uh, being pumped out over bandwidth. You probably want to simplify your PowerPoint presentations if you want to do that. Or if you want to bring up a web page to talk about, you know, you just select that. Um, the limitation there, though, is if you have decided that you're going to uh, share your PowerPoint screen, your PowerPoint window. And during the middle of that PowerPoint window, you, you decide, oh, I need to go over and pull up this Word document to show them that. Zoom is not going to share that over, over the screen. You would actually have to stop sharing and then reshare. So I usually just select to share my desktop. This does not mean to share my actual desktop. What it means is whatever is covering up my computer screen is what is going to be pumped out to the students. Usually my computer screen is so cluttered that students are never gonna see what's on my back on my desktop. Okay. And if you do that, then you can easily move back and forth between showing a web page and then showing a Word document and then showing an Excel 
spreadsheet and then going to a PowerPoint slide without having to worry about, oh, Zoom's not gonna show that to them because you haven't selected that as what they're showing. I don't wanna slow this down, but um, I'm having trouble understanding that distinction. Um, uh, if I hit share screen and I'm going from uh, a keynote presentation to uh, looking at a Word document. Select desktop then, Warren, to share your desktop. So, where is that? Uh, well, hit share screen, and then when you have the option, choose desktop. But I'm sharing my screen in this session, so you can't really play with that part right now, Warren. Okay, that was helpful. Thank you. Okay. So, um, and, and then um, just when you're ready to stop sharing at the top of the screen, there will be, uh, when you are in sharing mode, uh, it gets a little bit more busy for you because you've got your screen that you're sharing or your PowerPoint window that you're sharing. Uh, the uh, part, the thumbnail view of uh, of the other participants, you know, becomes this floating palette as well as the tools. And so you have to kind of sometimes move these floating palettes out of the way for you to be able to actually get to the part of the screen that you want to interact with. But at the, when you're done, ready to stop sharing, um, you can click on that red stop share. That's always, always visible for you to stop sharing. Um, if you are in, um, you know, presentation mode and something does, you do see that something pops up on the chat, you can find the chat window under this dot, dot, dot more under the toolbar here. Um, and Keith, when you stop sharing, uh, it goes back automatically to your camera feed, right? Right. Okay. Well, your camera feed, unless you've turned it off, is always being pumped out, but it's being pumped out in one of those thumbnails just like everyone else's. Okay. Can, can you show me again where the sh share screen link is? So, um, yeah, if, if you right now mouse over where you see uh, everyone's, where you see the, the faces, you should see tools at the bottom where you've got mute or unmute, you've got start or stop video, you've got uh, share screen. Um, can you share a, a, a YouTube? You can um, share YouTube. Um, the way it would have to work is you would need to share your either your whole desktop or at least the web browser that you're going to share the YouTube video in. And uh, I don't actually probably, I don't think I have a screenshot of it, but um, when you are selecting that screen to share, there are some options to control how the audio is handled. One of the options is to not only share the screen, but to pump the computer audio through the Zoom connection. If you don't select that, students are going to, from your screen, they're going to see the YouTube video playing, but they probably won't hear it unless you've got it coming so loud out of your speakers that your microphone picks it up and ships it that way. Okay. Um, what would the solution to that be? The solution would be to, if you want to play a YouTube video, get it queued up in your browser. Go to share screen, select that browser window to share, but make sure you click to the option to pump the computer audio as well as the video to, through the Zoom connection. Can I ask a question? Yeah. Um, We're so, not going to get to breakout rooms, but yeah. Uh, huh? Okay. Uh, I mean, I don't have to if you don't no, want no, me. No, no, no. I, I don't think we got time to cover breakout rooms oh, anyway. Okay. Urs Ursula was just saying this, that students are able, so it looks like from the interface, all the users are able to share By what default. we have locally too. Yep. So because I've stopped sharing, Robin, if you, if you mouse over the screen, you should see a, a share screen option down there. 
yeah, I did. You're in as a participant, but you would have the ability to share your screen. But would I overwhelm your screen or would it come up as a discrete window? You have this option when I'm not sharing a screen. You okay. Right. You, you supersede, the, the leader supersedes, and then, but if I want to defer, so Jamie, can you show us your homework? They can right. bring up a PDF from their screen. Yep. Great. Um, so I noticed, um, let's see, there should be, I'm in as host, so I don't have the ability to raise my hand. When you're looking at your participant screen, you should see an option to raise your hand. Yes. So as you do that, so Warren just raised his hand. Uh, Warren's account goes to the top of the participants list. If someone else would click to raise their hand in using the raise hand tool, uh, now Janine is queued up next in line and then Pat. So uh, this is one way to manage the conversation. And, and those of you who are in as participants, you should, when you're looking at the participants list, you should see that, well, uh, there are already several people in line who got their hands raised. And so I could say, you know, Warren, go ahead and unmute yourself and, and, and um, you know, add, add what you want to add. And he would do that. I, um, when I'm looking at uh, Warren's listing in the participant list, one of my options is to lower his hand. So if he's, you know, if I've recognized him and he's talking, I can click lower hand and his hand goes away. Talking, talking. He's talking, talking, and now Janine is at the top of the list. And then when Warren stops talking, I can I can say, okay, Janine, you're up next. What do you talking, think? Talking, 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 talking. And then I lowered her hand, and then it would be Pat. So that that's one protocol you can use to kind of manage, especially if you've got a class that, that's relatively large. Um, let me. Uh, we're 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 close to out of time, but let me just, um, are any of you interested in doing polling as a way to engage your students? Because it's pretty easy to set up. Yes, I might be, Keith. Okay. At so I won't go through all the steps, so I'll show you where to go. If, for example, for this workshop I'm doing next week, I wanted to set up a, a poll. First of all, make sure you've got polling enabled in your account settings. Go to your meetings list, click on the link for a meeting where you want to add a poll. And down at the bottom, below where it says edit and start this meeting, you've got an option here for adding polls. You can click add. Uh, and you should actually see this because I'm sharing my screen, right? Yes. You get a pretty simple interface for adding a poll. You know, what's your favorite color? I'll just call, I'll call the polls colors. I'll type the question, you know, what's your favorite color? And I'll be pretty simplistic about this. Uh, red. Orange. Yeah. Yellow, etc. I always hate typing when I'm doing uh, a workshop. You click save. That cues that poll up. And then I can't show this live uh, in the Zoom session because I can't, I'm not sharing that part of the screen. But when you go to, um, you know, you, you go to your class, you would have a polling tool show up down here. You click on polling, you select the colors, um, uh, you, you go here, you select the, this is how you would create it. You would select the um, uh, colors poll to, to launch that poll. If someone's on their phone, they'll get a polling 
window pop up. They can select what color is their favorite, submit it. You see the answers coming in as they, as they come in. When you're ready to close the poll, you'll see the final distribution of the responses. You have the option to show the results. That pushes the results back out to the students. So again, it's a, it's a really easy way to periodically, especially if you know you want to get feedback from your students on certain topics as the class go, session goes on, you can, you can set up these polls ahead of time. You can do it on the fly, but you, know, you have to then do it on the fly. It it's, takes, takes up time if you do it that way. And then, you know, it's a good way to solicit feedback and share that feedback out. The other feature that I, I thought we might cover is breakout rooms. If anyone's interested in breakout rooms, you know, send, send us an email at tltc at purchase.edu and I can, uh, you can either work with you or it's pretty straightforward. I can send you some screenshots about how that works. Um, so take home, if you don't have your uh, Zoom business license from CTS yet, you know, get that arranged. Uh, we will have this recording as well as the recording from yesterday uh, up on our YouTube channel. The idea is figure out, figure out how you want to use your Zoom room. Figure out, do I really actually need to have a real-time face-to-face online meeting for every face-to-face -face class session that I'm replacing? Or can I replace the, what we would have been doing in the face-to-face -face classroom with asynchronous online activities and, and, and meet the same functionality? Because if you, can, if you can do, if you can accomplish the same thing in an asynchronous fashion as we're moving to this remote support for instruction, that is easier for your students and it's easier for you. When you go to real-time, online, face-to-face, -face, synchronous activities, that raises the bar technologically. Everybody's gotta be there at the same time. Everybody's technology has to work at the same time. You know, if someone's having a glitch with their Wi-Fi at home, they're screwed. Whereas if you set up some asynchronous learning activities that, that accomplishes the same thing as what you would have done in the face-to-face -face class, that gives the students more leeway, more forgiveness about you know, how they get to it. But certainly- I, I recorded yesterday's class and then it said upload to cloud and then I sent that link to the class. Yep. I, did, I, I haven't checked it yet, but that's another way to make- you Right, know. yeah. So if, if a student has technical issues one afternoon when you're having class, but you've recorded it, then you have a you know they have a way to uh, to recover. Um, so hopefully this has been useful. Uh, useful. I don't know, Marie. I haven't been watching the chat. Is there anything else? Um, I'm going to stop my sharing so I can actually see the chat. Um, anything else? So uh, yeah, I have a question. Uh, I need to be able to show on my physical desktop. That is, I'm showing my students how to bind books. I need to show them how the proportions of paste to water, how to glue, how to adhere. Are you and, doing this from your laptop or tablet? Uh, I can't hold it at the same time as I'm I explaining this. This is one of the problems. Well, if, if the, I guess the, the, the way it would work is if you've got some way of propping your tablet up on a workbench or something yeah. that looks at the area where you're going to be working, then, then students can follow along as you are doing the making. Does this uh, work well with an uh, iPad, by the way? It works fine with iPad. Okay. And if an iPad is easier to prop up in some way where the camera, and actually with the iPad, you'd have the choice between front-facing camera or back or rear-facing camera. Okay. Um, Leonard. Sorry, Leonard, um, this is Janine here. We are gonna, if you're gonna come to the 4 p.m. art and design Zoom meeting tomorrow, I'm gonna go over some of these. How do we do physical, how can we show them physical things? I, I did some demonstrations, physical demonstrations. Thank you very much. This week, so we'll go over that. I, I'm not sure if I can make that tomorrow uh, due to other well, things besides okay. distance, but yeah. 
And, and Janine, I'll talk to you later, Gene. Janine, Janine, if, if you could record that and share it with us, we'd be happy to put that up in our YouTube channel. Okay, so it's Chris. It's Chris's meeting, but I'll remind him to record it. And yeah. He's he originated it, but we're co-teaching it. So yeah. Yeah. So Arena, when you save chat, um, the default setting is for at least on my Mac, uh, my MacBook. At, every time I run a session. Zoom creates a, Zoom, a folder for that session in my Zoom folder in the documents area. Probably works the same way on Windows. And Zoom, the default account setting is for Zoom to archive the chat down into that folder. And if I'm doing recordings, the recordings will go down to that folder as well. Uh, I'm a bit compulsive, so what I oftentimes do is at the end of the meeting, when the chat window is open, I'll double click on a word that somebody has said in the chat. I'll do a command all on the Mac or control all on Windows, select the whole chat and do a copy and immediately paste that whole chat record into a, a text document so that you know I've got it there as well. Um, let's see, what do I have coming up? I mean, if people are willing to stay, um, no, I actually, um, I can't stay much longer. Uh, I will, I will, um, I will do something on breakout rooms and get that distributed out to everyone. And uh, Marie's put in a tutorial as well. Uh, in terms of practice, you can see some of my screenshots are, are uh, from a pretty topocrate classroom. I've got my iPhone, I've got my laptop, and I've got uh, actually two tablets, two iPads. And so what I did was open up the room on my, uh, my laptop as host, went to the, the room with not being logged in, so I'm a, as different accounts on the three different devices. And you can kind of play around being uh, host and participant at the same time. I mean, if you've got more than one device, that's the easiest way to run a test. Just open up your personal uh, meeting space. Go to your mobile device uh, and the, the Zoom app on your mobile device and open up your, uh, you know, use, open up that same room on the device. Uh, you want, want to turn off, down the audio or turn off the audio so you don't get horrendous feedback, uh, especially in the same room. But then you can, you know, get a feel for what is it like being in this room as a host and as a, a participant. Okay. So I will get some information out on break uh, breakout rooms. We will share uh, the recording from this. Uh, I'll share the recording from the session we did. I did for the humanities and other schools yesterday for those who weren't there. Uh, I'll share the slides I used for that and the notes for here. Uh, probably I'm going to need a few days to recover before I start pumping out some of these resources to you, but, you know, by the weekend, expect some follow-up from the session today. And thank you all for coming. Uh, again, uh, we just need to play it by ear the next few weeks. We need to give ourselves some space to, to adjust and accommodate, and uh, we'll all get through this. And most importantly, we'll get our students through this to the end of the semester. Okay. Thank you, Keith. Thank you.